Hello, DS106. Hello. It's Martha Burtis again. Um, I'm being joined today by Tim Owens. Hi. You may know him as Timmy Boy. Um, today was Tim's first day of work here in the Division of Teaching and Learning Technologies at the University of Mary Washington. Indeed. Um, a somewhat inauspicious start, your first day of work, and um, one of your colleagues has still not shown up in the office. Yeah. This is the third day. I didn't even know what to expect. I know, really. yeah. Well, did you were on vacation. Did you know about right. the disappearance of Jim Graham? Um, you know, I had my phone on me, and I saw some things going on in Twitter, but for the most part, no. No, you no, didn't I was, know. I was tanning. I in was a, tanning. On the beach, on not the beach. in a booth? No. Okay. You don't not look that tan. You must have used a lot of sunscreen. I try. Um, so when you showed up here this morning, were you surprised to learn that Jim wasn't going to be here, or as far Very as Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, disappointed? Uh, yeah, I don't know that I'd go that far. I would like to tell you this is rare. Yeah. But it's not. Mm. Um, Andy Rush and I, who've been working with Jim since he started here uh, five years ago, we regularly have to experience this. Once he went away. Um, for two weeks, actually. Wow. Um, it turned out he had gone to the University of Richmond um, on a sabbatical. Uh, it would have been nice if he told us before he left, but um, we managed to get him back. We managed right. to bring him back from the brink of that one. But yeah. um, I don't know about this one. You know, his family, it, it doesn't seem his family has heard from him, but we're not, we don't have a lot of contact with them either. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's been on Twitter. Mm apparently, and as well, uh, I think he had some posts on his blog. He seems to be doing the audio assignment. Yeah, and it's odd because, I mean, you're sort of doing all the work for him, and you just got done with a course, so this Good should point. really be your chance to take a break. You had yeah. gone up to, where, New Jersey? Yeah, I was in New Jersey um, at the end of last week. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I, Honestly, this occurrence is so common with Jim that it's in my job description really? that I have to just step in whenever he goes on a walkabout. I um, wonder if it's in mine. Now that I think about if it, it's, I better check. Have, you should check. I, should. I may, I may have negotiated a, a switch of that responsibility because yeah. I'm I'm burnt out by it. Honestly, yeah. I mean, you know, adjunct pay is low to begin with. And here I am teaching this class for free mm -hmm. um, and doing a pretty phenomenal job, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you are carrying I mean, I don't here. usually like to brag. Yeah, never. Um, but I really did step in in the clutch. I mm -hmm. have to say, I haven't appreciated some of the community's reaction yeah. to my commitment to this class. I had some really... Um, not very supportive comments left on my blog right. over the weekend. And it's not even your fault, really. Exactly. Yeah. And people calling me immature as though I'm somehow responsible for what's happening here. Yeah. When all I've done is step up to the plate when nobody else was going to. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, after today, I'm done. You're done, done? I'm done. I'm done, done with it. I, you know, if Jim can run away, why can't I? You well, know, why does he, why is he the only one who's allowed to... I mean, disappear to the the jungle it's i mean that's perfectly fair but we've somebody's got to teach this well, course I don't right know. i don't know who that's we've got be. what one more week left like i said here, you should check your job week. description it might be your job i don't know i mean i'm definitely I mean, willing to step in here and help here and there but you know we may need to get students to help out as well well somebody I mean, better step up to the plate because right. you know i'm doing the web storytelling assignment which um because i'm the only one who knows how to teach that yeah um jim couldn't teach that one um and then after this we move into video and honestly andy always teaches that for jim too because uh -huh. jim he struggles with that one as well so right. i know andy will be available um i think on wednesday or thursday um, to do that introduction. But other than that, you know, I'm doing this assignment today. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to do a hands-on thing today. Um, and you're going to do the web storytelling assignment, all you mm -hmm. students of DS106-7. But um, after that, um, I, I don't know where this goes after that, yeah. honestly. I wash my hands of it because I just, I haven't appreciated. You know, there were some people on Twitter, I don't know if you saw this, because you were in Myrtle Beach right. tanning. Mm -hmm. um, there were some people on Twitter who were calling into question my loyalty. 
Really? There was some suggestion that maybe I was making all of this up about Jim Groom disappearing. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... Like, I, I, I don't even clearly, know how to react to that, honestly. What am I supposed to say to that? I mean, Jim has made it very obvious where he stands here. You, know? you think? What, what, what's obvious to you? I, I, well, I don't know where he stands. I mean, he's gone. He, he said it himself. I mean, he disappeared. But then what do you make of the fact that he's been tweeting for the last few days and talking to people in DS-106? He's been doing assignments. He's been leaving comments. No, that's true. Yeah. I mean, he's here, but he's not here. Mm -hmm. He's committed, but he's not committed. Um, I, I, I just, I wash my hands of it. So anyway, yeah. that's kind of the situation. It's where we are now. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry that this is your first day on the job. I you know, feel terrible about this. Um, it's a challenge for sure. But it is. And I imagine in the interview, nobody told you. No. He, no, he never reveals no. this side of himself right. in those situations. Yeah. Right? He's all jolly, right? Friendly. Mm -hmm. Oh, come work at DTLT. You'll have so much fun. Right. Right. So. Well, anyway, I, I guess we should move on to... Yeah. Um, the next part of the program, we're going to be talking about an assignment um, that I invented. Um, Did you? Is that funny? No, it's not. It's uh, our web storytelling assignment. It's my favorite assignment of DS-106. Honestly, I think more of DS-106 should be about this kind of storytelling. I think it's far more interesting yeah. than some of the other assignments that Jim came up with well, that's um, true. when he yeah. began teaching Absolutely. the class. We've really gotten kind of bogged down in some of the weight of that. but. Web storytelling, um, as it's conceived for this assignment, is about intervening in an existing website to create new meanings or tell new stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I find this a really interesting assignment because I think the web is a huge platform for storytelling. Everywhere you look, particularly in this new 2.0 version of the web, there are opportunities for us to be present in the creation right. of the web. And this takes this kind of to the next level. Um, and so what we're gonna be doing is working through um, um, this assignment using a couple of different tools. I'm gonna show you how to, how to install those, how to use those. Um, and, we're, and your assignment, students of DS-106-7, is going to be to choose a site to intervene in, um, to create a new meaning, to tell a new story. Um, the site you choose is up to you, although I will give you some advice about the best kinds of sites to work with. Um, some sites, some pages are easier to work with than others, um, but it's really up to you what you want to do and what you want to do with this project. Um, as an example, I kind of wanted to show something that I did last week. I don't know if you had a chance to see this um, from South Carolina, but I woke up early um, Thursday morning. As I, as I said on the show on Thursday, I think on some level I sensed that there was this disruption in DS-106 right. because I woke up, I just I couldn't sleep. So um, I went online and I just happened to Google DS-106, um, kind of curious to see kind of the latest happenings um, and also curious to see if there was anything out there that I'd missed. Mm -hmm. um, and I discovered this um, listing. Oh, do you think you could, um, sure. could we switch to my screen? All right, it should Thanks. be up. Well, here we go. Yeah. All right. There we go. Uh, I discovered this listing on Amazon, which really shocked me mm -hmm. um, for a, um, a dual speed hub um, mm -hmm. made by the company Netgear. Right. Um, and, and then the, uh, item number on this shop, amazingly, is DS-106, DS which, right. who knew that there was this precedent for this class. Um, and I, I decided to have a little bit of fun with this, so I took this page and I rewrote it, mm -hmm. um, using the techniques that we're going to be showing you, and I uploaded it to my site. Um, this is the newly rewritten DS-106. I very cleverly mm -hmm. changed it from a hub um, to a course. To a course. Um, so this looks almost identical. Almost you'd identical. Have, you'd have right. to really know what to you're Amazon, looking for. Amazon, exactly. Um, you'll see Netgear has now been changed to Oblivion Industries, uh. which I thought was very clever as well. I've rewritten the technical details, the product details, the product description. Mm -hmm. Um, customers who viewed this item also viewed the DS-107, um, which is also available on Amazon. That's what we're going to be rewriting today is mm -hmm. the DS-107 page. Now, did you have to, like, dig into a whole bunch of code and really know how to make websites to It's a this? really great question, Tim. I do know how to make websites. Uh, that's just a gift that I have. 
Um, but no, I didn't have to use those skills um, because I've discovered a tool that makes this easier for those of you who um, don't have this expertise. Um, it's a plugin for Firefox, the popular Firefox browser called Firebug. It is actually used by professional web developers to debug websites during the development process. Um, but it allows you to do live editing locally of a copy of a web page on your own computer um, in order to kind of see the effects of changes. And so we're going to be using that Firebug pl plugin to do the kind of um, hopefully, I mean, I don't know if everybody else is is going to have so, as much success as I did right. with this. I mean, I have a well, lot of practice. Yeah. Um, you are the you're the goal that well I don't, be I don't wanna, to. I mean I don't want to you know overblow this but yes um, this is what you're working towards okay uh, working for um, you're going to be using that firebug plugin to kind of rewrite the page um, you'll use another plugin to capture a screenshot of the page so you can have an image okay but you're also going to be using a text editor on your own computer to copy and paste the code of the page and upload it to your web server so that in addition to the image version of the page, you will actually have a live sort of semi-functioning um, version of the page. So for example, on this site, right now if we look at the URL, we're on my server. Mm -hmm. um, you can switch back to that. Thank you. There we go. Um, if I look at the URL, this is on marthabertus.net. I'm not on amazon.com. Um, but these links all work because this is a live um, version of the site. So if I mouse over the DS107 link and clicked on this, this would actually take me to the Amazon page for that product. Gotcha. So you'll have um, two different versions of this of this project when you're done. The project is going to be due Wednesday by midnight. Um, since I said that I would oversee this project, I you know I decided I would come on today and give this assignment. And I will be looking at the work that you do. I will answer any questions that you have. I will. I will see my way through that commitment because I did. I made a commitment, and I believe in keeping my promises to you, the community of DS106/7. So you'll be able to find me on Twitter, mm -hmm. on my blog, elsewhere on the internet if you need assistance with this project. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get started? How, have you ever worked on a project like this before, Tim? I did. I did one. So, you know, I was in the DS-106 spring course. The open. Of the yeah. open online type stuff. And I did one where I was actually working in Facebook. I'm not on Facebook anymore, but at the time I was. And uh, there would, there's a lot of times where you'll read something on Facebook and, you know, you might read a hateful comment or something. And so I thought it would be kind of interesting to rewrite the comments of other people. That's one thing that I think is interesting um, with certain projects. Uh, you can go different ways with them. Um, with one of the design assignments like the big hip hop, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've heard that some people don't like doing that one because it sort of denigrates a very uh, important image. You get these photographs that might be happening from a tsunami or something and they're like, I don't want to put hip hop lyrics on top of that and make fun of it. Uh, but I think that it does provide an avenue for you to tell a story and you're opening yourself up to be able to take images or in this case websites and specific elements of websites and create a new story with that and not one that has to be funny. You can do something funny and like in this case with Amazon, you know, harmless fun and it's, you know, it's it's great. I, I actually thought this was an interesting commentary on the course, but it, it's fine if you thought it was harmless fun. Hey. But, okay. <laughs> but um, um, but anyway, yeah. so so that's something that you need to think about. Uh, what are you telling as the background? What kind of story are you trying to put out there with this? You're not yeah. just simply changing text on a page. I guess is my. It's a very way good point. Saying this. And and I will say also for this assignment, um, while I don't think my take on this this time was harmless fun um, is certainly we have had students before do humorous um, versions of the web storytelling assignment very successfully but we've also had people do some rather interesting commentary mm -hmm. on the spaces online on spaces online by intervening um, in those traditional spaces and rewriting something in a way that makes us sort of go hmm that's different yeah so um, so I appreciate that take on this um, you know, it's interesting when I taught the first uh, summer session of this class, many, a uh, few of my students um, were a bit taken aback by this assignment. They felt that maybe it was dishonest yeah. to be editing um, a, a newspaper website or a government website mm -hmm. um, and putting it up um, somewhere else. Um, 
you know, the fear being somebody might stumble up upon it and think it was for real. Like mm -hmm. somebody might come to my server um, and think that they can actually buy the DS106 sure. six port 10 100 dual speed course with uplink button and built in social networking. Mm -hmm. And then when they click on add it, um, you know, uh, to my cart, mm -hmm. be rather disappointed yeah. to discover it isn't actually for sale um, for 3898. Yeah, it's so a, it's a fair criticism. I mean, yeah. what would I, you, how would you respond to those students? What's your. I mean, my response to that is that I think what this project in particular asks us to question is the validity of what we read online. Okay, so you so we found an Amazon page that's at marthabertus.net, so that's obviously questionable, but we read stuff all the time and it's not just things like Wikipedia articles that we know are edited by a mass group of people and we just take a lot of that as fact that what we're reading on there it may or may not be questionable, but then even things that we read on you know, a news website like the Washington Post, and we, you know, are, we need to be questioning everything that we read and see online. And so I think that's one of the things that this project in particular can do is that it, it makes you see that the web itself is this malleable object that can take many different forms and that, you know, can be read and interpreted in many different ways and that you should always be looking at it with um, objectivity, that you're always questioning what you read and looking for sources and things like that. It's a great you know. point. And in fact, what it makes me think of is that DS-106, while it's certainly a course about creating media and intervening in media, it's also a course about reading media. Mm -hmm. Um, and consuming media and understanding media. And, and m in many ways, those lines, those boundaries begin to really become blurred yeah. um, as you work on these kinds of assignments. Um, so those are all things for you to think about as you um, determine what story you would like to tell um, in this project. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we've taken a look at an example. Um, before you get started, there are a couple of um, tools that you may like to assemble on your own computer. So. Um, you're going to need to have Firefox installed. I'm going to assume that everybody does have Firefox installed. Um, in addition, you're going to need to install an add-on, uh, two add-ons for Firefox, actually. And if you've never um, done this before, let me kind of walk you through this process. Um, Firefox is a remarkable browser, in part because it is what we call extensible, which means that you can install these um, additional programs or add-ons um, to extend the capabilities of the browser, to allow the browser to do something that it can't do um, straight out of the box. Um, and there are literally thousands of add-ons that people have written for Firefox. It's quite remarkable. Um, and if you go up to your tools menu, you will see um, an add-ons um, item there. And if you click on it, you will find yourself at a screen like this um, with a, a menu on the side that says get add-ons. And over here in the search box, I'm just going to type in Firebug. Um, and that's going to bring up um, uh, a number of tools available um, for some reason. Oh, yes, here it is, Firefox, Firebug 1.7.3. These are a number of add-ons available for um, Firefox that actually have something to do with Firebug. The only one that we're really interested in is the core Firebug add-on. So we're going to go ahead um, and next to Firebug 1.73, we're going to click Install. Um, so that's going to go ahead and download. Um, now, once you add an add-on, you actually have to restart the browser in order to be able to use it. But before I, um, um, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and install the other add-on, which um, now I'm having trouble remembering it because I uninstalled it. Oh, it's called Screen Grab. So Screen Grab 0.96.3. I'm going to go ahead and install that one as well. And I'm going to restart my Firefox browser now. Okay, and so here we are. Um, we're back in Firefox. Now we'll see in our add-on toolbar at the bottom, we have a couple of new icons. Um, one looks like a little bug. That would be Firebug. Um, the other one looks like something I can't describe. Um, and we're going to be using both of those. We'll get back to that in a minute. The one other tool that you're going to want to have installed on your computer before you start this is a really robust text editor. And I have one that I can recommend for Windows and one that I can recommend um, for Mac. If you're on the Windows, um, a Windows machine, um, a really great editor for this project would be Notepad++, which is a free download. You can go to notepad-plus-plus.org in order to download Notepad++. If you're on the Mac, um, a free editor, the one that I'll be using today, is called Text Wrangler, 
which is actually sort of the little brother to a very popular um, editor on the Mac called BB Edit. So both of those are available. Um, Text Wrangler is available at barebones.com. It's one of their products. That's the name of that um, company. So you're going to want to have both of those installed before you begin. The two Firefox plugins and a text editor. And at that point, what you want to do is find the site that you're going to edit. And as, as I said, I decided that today what we'll be doing um, is editing the DS107 um, product on Amazon. Okay. So I've gone ahead and pulled that up. This is a originally a Synology Disk Station One Bay Diskless Network Attached Storage Device mm -hmm. um, with the model number DS107. It comes in white. Um, once you've found the page that you want um, to work on, there are a couple of different ways to activate Firebug. My favorite um, way to get at it is I find the item that I want to edit. So in this case, I'm going to edit the title of this. Um, and I right click on it. And I will see that um, one of the options that appears to me in the menu is something called Inspect Element. And when I click on Inspect Element, that opens up a new panel sort of below um, the main web page that is showing me the Firebug interface. Um, and what's highlighted um, when I open that panel is the item that I am actually um, had right clicked on and wanted to edit, which is the title of this, um, of this item this product on Amazon. So you didn't even have to search through code on your own or anything. You could no. just right click and select and that was Ex highlighted. Exactly. And then I know that if I go in and edit this right here, um, the corresponding item on the page will be changed. Um, one thing that I really like about Firebug actually is that if you're not familiar with HTML, if it terrifies you to look at this sort of markup language or, or code, um, it's a nice way to kind of get your feet wet. Um, it's very logical. Um, and as you work through the project, you may begin to start to see some patterns emerge as you understand how web pages are constructed. Um, but you don't need to know a lot about that in order to complete the project successfully. Before we make any changes, though, I'm going to do probably the single most important thing for this project, which is save my work. And we'll talk a little bit about why that's so important in this project. In the Firebug panel here, I'm going to scroll up to the top of the code block. And you'll see that the very first tag um, is um, in uh, between caret brackets, HTML, and I'm going to click the arrow next to that to kind of condense um, everything that's between that tag. And then I'm going to um, just right click on that HTML and I'm going to choose copy HTML. And from there I'm going to open up my text editor, in my case this is Text Wrangler, and I'm just going to paste into a blank text document what I just copied. So what I've basically done is just copy all of the HTML code that's behind the scenes of this page and stick it into my text editor. Why have I done this? Well, when you make changes in Firebug, they are kept in kind of a local cache. They are not saved anywhere. Um, and so in order to preserve the changes that you're making, you have to copy that code and put it into a text editor. The reason why it's really important that you do this and that you do this frequently, I act, I'm sorry, I'm boring you. No, not at all. The reason I recommend that you do this and that you do this frequently is that if for some reason you accidentally click away from this page, all of the changes that you've made will be lost. So if I were to change the title of this page from Synology Disk Station blah 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 to something else and then to accidentally click on camera and photo, mm -hmm. which would take me to the camera and photo page at Amazon.com and then click the back button, the edits that I had just made would be gone. They're all gone. They're all gone. And I cannot tell you how many students of DS106 have worked, worked, worked on this project only to accidentally click a link right. and lose everything that they've done. So my recommendation to you, um, students of DS106 slash 7, is that you regularly, maybe after every major edit you do, go back to the Firebug panel right click on HTML, copy that HTML, and put it into your text document right over your previous version and put that um, code into your text document. Okay. That way you always know that you have locally a copy of this that you can work with. All right, so we'll still be using Firebug for all of our edits and the yes. text editor is just as a backup. It's just a backup and it's what we will ultimately save when we're ready to upload this to our server. Okay. Now, I will say one other thing. We have a few students um, in DS106-7 who are computer science majors, who maybe have worked on websites before, who are comfortable and familiar with code. Mm -hmm. There's no particular reason why you have to use Firebug. 
If you're comfortable using some other editor, if you'd like to make your edits um, using another program, that's fine. I don't really care what tool you use. Firebug is a great tool for novices, for beginners, um, but it certainly is by no means required for this class or for this assignment. So let's go ahead and make some edits, shall we, Tim? Great. I'm going to go ahead again and click on the title um, and go to Inspect Element. And once again, that automatically um, defaults to uh, uh, the, the tag that I'm looking at, which in this case is a span tag. Um, and if I click on the content in that tag, which is Synology Disk Station 1 Bay blah blah blah, um, I can then go up here and click the Edit button in the Firebug panel. Actually, I think I need to have this, the tag selected and click the Edit button. And what that will do is just bring up a small text editor um, with the tag as well as the content of the tag in it. So what shall we rename this? Um, instead of the Synology Disk Station, I guess this will be the uh, Oblivion. The oblivion disk station. I like that. One bay diskless um, course. Networked, networked course. Networked course. Um, should it be available in more than one color? Let's do like rainbow color. Oh, I like that because yeah. that sort of fits with the peace and um, and love right. that I think is the deeper message of DS one hundred and seven. Absolutely. Some, all right. So we'll go ahead and um, when we're done, just click on that edit button again. And you'll see now that up in the main part of the web page, this has been changed. We now have Oblivion Disk Station One Bay Disk Listen Up. Of course, DS-107 in rainbow. And I've also noticed that as you're moving your mouse around on that yes. code, it's, it's highlighting the areas of the page that, so that you can kind of see how the code is working and what it, sections are. It's true. It's a wonderful visual tool mm -hmm. um, for, for understanding how the code um, underpins what it is you're seeing in the browser. Um, so that's 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 a great point, Tim. Thank you for no for pointing that out. It's now, according to Amazon right now, the DS-107 is, is currently unavailable. Um, shall we expand upon the reason for that, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, so it says it's currently unavailable. We don't know when or if this item will be back in stock. Um, what do you think would be a better um, a better I, note? I, I think we should clearly point out that it's been banished okay. by Jim Groom. So this um, is a good opportunity to mention that in addition to using the little editor in Firebug, for some of these shorter pieces of content, if you want to edit them, you can actually just click right on the text in the Firebug panel okay. and delete and rewrite. Um, so um, it is unclear when this item will be available again due to recent um, um, events, um, due to recent banishment. Oh, you have, perhaps we should do it this way. By like no the caps. instructor of DS-106, Mr. Jim Groom. I like that. Okay. So we now have changed the title and changed the unavailable um, notice. This would be a good time for us to go ahead and recopy this code. Oh, so call. I'm going to go ahead and um, click on HTML, copy that, um, go back to my text editor. Um, you can just paste over it. I'll just do a new document. Um, so now I've got my code backed up. What else can we change on this page? How about who it's by? So I see right there it's Absolutely. by Synology. Maybe we could change that. Um, Let's see, DS-107, who would that be by? by sort of the banished of DS-106. Yeah. Banished should always be in all caps, I think. That's the only way I've seen it done. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, now, very often you'll find content on a page um, that maybe you don't, there's no real great way to edit it um, to uh, correspond with your story. And so you really just want to get rid of that content mm -hmm. entirely. And I did that with my other Amazon project. Um, so let me show you how you would go about doing that. Um, let's say that this section about customers viewing this page may be interested in these sponsored links. We don't really want to have a sponsored link section. So I'm going to right click on that section, that's going to drop me down into a piece of the code where this is located. Um, and as I mouse over this, as Tim pointed out, I can see the different corresponding 
um, items on the page that the code corresponds to. And in this case, I see that there is this HTML div item that stands for division with a class of bucket. And when I mouse over it, that entire um, piece of content is highlighted. And I don't want that. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to choose delete element. Um, and now, as you see, I've completely removed um, that section from my web page. If it doesn't um, fit my story, I don't have to use it. Great. So another um, useful uh, uh, another useful tip yeah. as you're working with Firebug. Definitely. Um, other things that we might do, let's go ahead and look at, um, sometimes um, rather than wanting to get rid of an object on the page, you actually want to create more of the same. Like you might have a bulleted list item and you, there are only five on the existing page, but maybe you have six or seven bulleted list uh, items that you want to emphasize. So let's go up to technical details here where we have a bulleted list. I'll right click on that. Um, and I'm going to use the editor, the actual text editor in Firebug for this because there's a lot of content here that I want to work with. And ultimately, um, the HTML object as I mouse over this that corresponds to that list is, um, it has UL, which stands for unordered list, and okay. that's what I'm going to be editing. So I'm going to make sure the UL object in Firebug is highlighted, and then I'm going to click Edit. And that's going to bring up all the code associated with that list. And you'll see that um, there's UL, and then there are also these LI items, each of one, which corresponds to another bullet in the list. LI actually stands for list item. And if I want to create a new one, I would just copy an existing item in the list and paste um, it below. Oh yeah, and look how that updates right there on the And fly. right there on the page, I now have um, two additional bullets mm -hmm. that I can work with um, that if I wanted to, I could go ahead and edit those. Do you have any questions about that, too? Well, and that the, I was just going to say, and the nice thing is that it keeps the styling of that page. So those bulleted items all look exactly like uh, they would on an Amazon page. Exactly, exactly. Now, um, frequently, students ask me, Martha, I tell my students to call me Martha because I, I like to maintain kind of an informal attitude in my class. I know Jim likes people to call him Mr. Groom, but I'm not that formal. Um, my students will say, Martha, what do I do if I want to replace an image in my page? Yeah. Um, and that's a great question. Is it possible? What do you think? I, I should hope so. That, that would possible. make it more interesting. It, yeah. is, it is possible to replace an image. However, in order to replace an image in the page, you need to have that image hosted somewhere else. Okay. So what does that mean? Um, well, the image, for example, that you see of the item on Amazon of this disk station one bay um, device um, is hosted on a server on Amazon's web, uh, Amazon's web server. Right. Um, and this web page is just linking to that image, much like the students of DS106-7 have been inserting images into their own pages by linking to images, say, on Flickr or elsewhere. Um, if you want to put your own image in your web storytelling project, you would have to upload that image somewhere else, get the URL of that image, and then paste that into the code of the page. Do you think we should show people how to do that? I think so. I, I think, think that would be a good useful. idea. So what if we were to put our DS107 image in here? I think that sounds great. Um, what would be a good, let's see, let's go take a look at Flickr and see if we can find a good, somebody must have done a DS106-7 image. I should hope so, yeah. I'm still in it, all it's caps here. A movement. So I'm going to search on Flickr for DS107. Up oh, and sure enough, um, not trivial. Um, did this nice uh, poster. Uh, Viva la DS107 Revolution. Oh, that's great. Um, now this is a very large image that I'm right. looking at, and if I were to put that in my Amazon page, it wouldn't look very good. It's not going to look it's, like it's the way too big, right? right? It would probably break, in fact, the design of the page. It's so large. But luckily, Flickr allows me to see other sizes of the image. So I'm going to take a look at the small 100 by 100 thumbnail. I think that might work. What do you think? Well, Maybe a little it's a larger. Little small. How about the? Yeah. Shall we try that? I think that would okay. work really good there. So we're going to go with the small version of the image, which is 240 by 240 pixels. I'm just going to right click on that and copy the image location. Then I'm going to go back to my um, Oblivion um, Disk Station One Bay Networked Course DS107. Um, and now I'm going to right click on uh, the image itself and inspect it. 
Um, and that brings up an HTML tag, IMG, which as you can imagine stands for image. I'm gonna click the edit button so that I can edit this code. Mm -hmm. And this may be where those of you who've never worked with HTML before, you get to this sort of a part of the project and it may seem a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at this, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, the HTML image tag has a property called SRC, which stands for source, and following that is an equal sign, and then in quotes, a URL, and that happens to be the URL of the image. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is just copy to the end of the quotes there, delete what's there, and paste from Flickr the image oh, that yeah. I have. And now oh, I have, uh, let me click edit again, um, now I have our new DS-107 image. That looks replaced. great. Yeah. It does look great. Mm. It does. We're doing a great job here. I'm going to go ahead and copy my HTML code again oh. because yeah. that is so important. It I is. can't emphasize how important that is. Don't want to forget to back those things up. Put that code there. What other changes um, could we show people on this page that would help them to understand um, uh, sort of this assignment? What sort of things do you think people might like to do? I've got an idea. What's that? This is one that my students sometimes run into this element on a web page and they're not sure what to do with it. On the Amazon site, there is a box, a drop down box right. here for different um, stores in Amazon. We can actually edit um, the objects or the items in that drop box. Okay. So let me go ahead and right click on that. Now, so those things aren't necessarily going to show up in a screenshot. No, but good you, point. But there is, you're going to show us a way where we can save the site itself. Exactly. And that's why it is so important for you to have both the screenshot of your, your project as well as the code of your project. Uh -huh. Because I will say that some of the most effective digital storytelling assignments or web storytelling assignments that we've had for this um, project are where people have really gone that extra distance mm. to edit elements that aren't even obvious immediately, yeah. that you have to kind of experiment and explore the page in order to understand mm -hmm. um, what's going on in that space. So um, when I right clicked on that menu um, down in Firebug, it highlighted an HTML um, item called a select tag, which is for a select menu. Um, and much like we've been doing with everything else, I've got that highlighted, so I'm gonna click my editor. And that's gonna open something that looks very, very messy mm -hmm. um, and a little scary. But don't be too afraid. The reason why this is so messy is simply because there aren't line breaks in it. This is really just a very simple list. Okay. Um, and you'll see that um, the select menu is made up of a num number of other objects um, with the tag option. Each one corresponds to a different item in the menu. Okay. So I can go through here and put these spaces in um, before each opening option tag to make this a little bit easier to work with. Um, for example, Let's see, I've got a group of those there. If I said, you know, I want to edit this menu, but I don't want to have 35 objects in this menu the way Amazon does. I don't have that many changes to make. I'll just delete the bottom of that. And now I've got a, you know, a, a more or less um, uh, manageable list of, of objects in my menu. And I could go in and, um, and edit between this, uh, these option tags. The first one is Amazon Instant Video. We could say um, massively multiplayer online courses. Um, we could call these um, traditional online courses. Um, what could we do for this next one? Um, uh, blackboard uh, they wouldn't be called courses because you can't actually teach in like black. Like LMS nightmares. Mm. Who was that? Who did somebody did you hear, hear something? something? I did hear something. Did you hear something? I don't know. It was a good that suggestion, was. though. Yeah. LMS nightmares. I like that suggestion. Um, what else could Wherever we do? We'll leave from. beauty in there because it's always fun to leave something else behind, right? right. Um, and then. Um, what What are you doing to my screen there? Well, I was saying. All of these are also items. You've got two on each. Oh, line. I've got two on each. Oh, yeah. thank you. Oh, okay. wow. Good catch there I'm, by I'm Tim a, Owens. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, and so. I appreciate that. No problem. Um, so we actually have a lot more in here that we could play mm -hmm. with, but in the interest of time, that Good. gives people an idea of what's possible. When we're done, we click the edit button, and now if we go to our drop down menu, sure oh, enough, yeah. there we've are. changed the contents of mm -hmm. that menu. I think that basically covers sort of the, hmm? 
Somebody's telling me that we should um, work on commas. <laughs> Comments. He was mentioning. Maybe the um, customer reviews. Editing the customer reviews? Yeah. Okay. We'll well, it's that. more or less the same thing as we've been doing, but if somebody doesn't understand that and needs a refresher, Maybe. that's fine. <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and we'll edit this um, review. Um, should we ask for comments? Maybe on the chat? Yeah. That might be I a good idea, too. Let's, see, let's take a look. We're going to jump TV over to the DS106 TV site um, and see. Um, often I find, frankly, that these people aren't paying attention. Yeah. Um, I, I was very disappointed on Thursday when I was doing my broadcast. The people in the chat, they were off talking about all kinds of things that had, um, 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 you know, been, uh, I was discussing. They really weren't talking about, about, uh, about what we were dealing with. Um, ben Rhymes, um, Tech Savvy Ed, says, I'm moving pretty fast for people that may or may not have manipulated HTML before. Um, you can use slow motion <laughs> yeah, if it's too fast true. for you, Ben. Um, or you could watch it twice. Right. Both are options. Maybe even three times, mm -hmm. if need be. But another point that I will make is that there are actually some written um, resources for this assignment. Okay. Um, I've done extensive documentation for this assignment because I do feel like it is so critical and such a key component of DS-106. So we'll make those available as okay. well, resources from previous semesters. Well, that's good for people like Ben. That exactly. Need, if Ben is struggling that with that, you know, if he's a little new to the HTML. Sure. Um, that's fine. Let's see if there are any other um, comments in here. Um, can DS-107 use crayons and markers instead of HTML? That's from Todd Conaway, who's kind of a smart ass. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know what to say to that. You know, I'd say uh, you may do that and then take a picture of your laptop, but I fear for what your monitor will look like this after is true. you've written all over it. A very so. good point. Although you may deserve it. Yeah. Um, for that smart ass comment. Um, Let's see. I'm reading backwards, and that's always challenging. Uh, is Usurper an official, official title? I don't even know what they're talking about. Yep, see, they're not talking about the assignment at all. See right. this? They're just chatting and with the talky-talky and the not listening. And then, you know what? These are the same people who are going to be asking me on Twitter, Martha, how right. do I do this? I can't remember. Can you help me? So It's if, not working. So, you know, if you have any questions, get them out right now. Yeah, while this we're would be your this. opportunity, This would be folks. a good chance for you to, for us to clarify any questions that you may have about the assignment. Otherwise, you're on your own, um, and it's going to be up to you all as students to help each other out. Oh, that's nice. Timmy, Timmy Boy, Boy is, is nicer, nicer than, than Martha. Martha. Wow. Right. Thanks. The people, Thanks, Todd. The people have spoken. I, you know, I, I don't know what to say to that. I, just, I, I just take a moment. What? This is ridiculous. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take Martha's chair. Give me a second here. This is my first day on the job. Okay. I, I, I don't deserve this. And to be quite honest, I, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing up here. I come in. Are you coming back? Yeah. I, yeah? I'm coming. I just want to get some water, okay? Oh, well, thank you for keeping the seat warm. You know, I don't want, I understand you're frustrated, Martha. I totally get that. But the fact of the matter is, we've got to move on. You know, we are, we are in Jim's shoes now, and we need to move forward with this. And I understand your frustration, and some of that may be coming out on this broadcast. It's just a little hard when I'm I working get, as hard as I am. No, I understand. And that. I see these comments, and it. I understand that. My world's been rocked, too. I mean. I, did I, I tell you the kind of morning I had, too? No. What happened this morning? I'm driving to work this morning, and I go over this. I have to go over a bridge to drive to work. It's called the Falmouth Bridge. Anybody who's been to Fredericksburg um, will know it. Uh -huh. And I, I notice out of the corner of my eye, like on this post on the bridge, there's a human skull. Shut up. I swear to God, that's how my day started. And then I get here and just, and now these, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to leave you in the lurch. It's okay. It's been a really tough morning. I, I walked around the corner. I got myself some water. I'm ready. I'm ready to resume. You know, I, 
it's been a hard morning for me as well. I sort of figured on my first day of work that, you know, people would be, I don't know, making me coffee, uh, getting me oriented to right. the office. That you'd have a phone ready and a network sure. ID e and a computer. Email address. I mean, anything. just the simple things. Right. Yeah. And really, it's just like I've, I've just been thrown to the wolves here. No, Instead, you come in here and the guy who hired you is gone and you're asked to come on and help yeah. me. And I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You are oh. very nice. You are probably nicer than me. I, I can accept that. Um, but I'm nicer than Jim. So right. in the so hierarchy it, of things, he's still below us. It's all relative. Okay. Right. For all sure. right. So let's get back to our assignment. Let's say we've completed um, our web editing project. Okay. What do we do next? Well, there are two there are two things that we need to do as, as we discussed. One is to take a screenshot of our work. The other is to save our code. Um, the screenshot is pretty straightforward. Back on our page that we've edited, in this case our DS107 page, I'm going to close up Firebug by clicking that little X. And then down here in the bottom, um, in my add-on bar, I'm going to click Screen Grab, mm -hmm. um, which is the other plugin we installed. This is a wonderful plugin. What it does is it actually captures your computer screen in an image. Okay. Um, so anything, or not your computer screen, your browser window, it, anything that's in your browser, it will capture an image of. Okay. Um, and the reason why this one is particularly nice is that if your web page goes what we say below the fold, which means you have to scroll down to see all of it, mm -hmm. it will actually capture an image of the entire thing. Oh, okay. Even so the part that can't be seen. Even that you can't see. Exactly. Okay. Great. So we're going to choose save. Um, you have a couple of different options, again, one of which is visible portion, or you can actually make a selection. But in our case, what we're interested in is the complete page or frame, which is what we're going to save. I'm going to go ahead and save that to my DS-107 our DS-106 folder. Um, .png. Um, and then I'll just go so that you can see what this looks like. I'll go into preview um, and open that file. So there we have, it's, oh, it's wow. large. Yeah. Um, when you save an image like this, it is gonna be very big. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still upload this um, and insert it into a post on your blog. And then within the browser, people can kind of open just the image and zoom in on it and okay. see the details. So this could be a thumbnail on your blog post. Exactly. And then when they clicked on it, they could get the full version. Exactly. And this, you see, as they zoom in, all the detail is there. Oh, yeah. So it's still visible. It's just it's such a long image mm -hmm. that in order to fit it on the screen, preview makes it look very, very small. Sure. Um, let me close that up. The next step, and really, um, in some ways, the trickiest step, is is working with the code itself. Now. Um, let me go, I'm not sure whether or not I saved that final version, so let me open up Firebug one more time. Um, just so you know, in addition to opening Firebug by right-clicking on an element and choosing Inspect Element, I can also click this little bug icon yeah. down in my add-on bar. Okay. Um, so I'm going to scroll up to the top of the code, I'll close up that HTML, copy it, um, open yet another new document, and paste that in. So there's the code with all of my changes in it. Okay. Um, and now I am going to um, save it. Um, to DS-106. Um, there, people sometimes run into problems when they save their page where they'll have sort of strange character entities, like strange... Mm -hmm. um, letters or not like letters and numbers will shift to other strange characters um, when they put it up on their web server and usually that's because they don't have it encoded properly okay in text wrangler you can change the encoding right here mm -hmm. in the save dialog and your best bet um, is going to be unicode utf8 unicode although it depends UTF a little bit on the original encoding if you run into problems with encoding shoot me a message on twitter i'm happy to look at your project and help you with that. But it won't make your project completely unreadable. It just may add some odd characters. So Do you like, have any other advice about so that? So like when there's a, where an apostrophe should be, right. there's like a question mark exactly. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean that you screwed up when right. you were working in Firebug. It just has something to do with what the server you're putting it on is expecting to see when it displays that document. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, Okay. totally. So I'm going to go ahead and call this DS-107 Amazon. Now, this is really important. You want to save it as an HTML file, not as a text file. 
Um, so at the end of this, I'm going to put the extension .html. Okay. Okay, and that's really really important. So now I have ds107 underscore Amazon .html. Um, there are two ways that you can get this up on your server. Um, one of them is if you're comfortable with it, um, you can go into your cPanel on your web server, wherever it is that you hosted your website. If you're at Cast Iron Coding or um, at Bluehost, um, you would log into cPanel and you would use what's called their file manager. Mm -hmm. If you've never used File Manager, it's just a web-based way of navigating the files on your web server. Okay. So let me show you how to do that, and then I'll show you the alternative. I'm going to open up File Manager, and this is a pretty familiar interface. It's going to show you directories, um, and as you drill down in those directories, it'll show you the contents, the so file contents. This looks just like the folders on my computer. Exactly. Okay. It looks a lot like just working with folders on your computer. Now, the folders will be named odd things because sure. these are um, this is a web server, not your computer, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, it's not too hard to figure this out, but all of the public content on your web server is stored in a directory called public underscore HTML. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. I have a lot of stuff on my web server because I do a lot of stuff on it. Mm -hmm. um, you will not have as much. Um, you will not need to do this next step. I actually have several domains hosted on my web server, one of which is marthabertus.net, and all the contents of that are in a folder called marthabertus. Okay. But for those of you who just have you know, maybe one directory, you're not going to need to take this extra step. I'm going to go ahead and open up Martha Burtis, um, and then I'm just going to upload this file to that directory. And now if I open up a new tab and go to Martha Burtis.net, go to, what was it called, DS107, Amazon.html, Amazon. we'll see what that looks like. And there's my page. Oh, wow. Now, there is some strange stuff going on up here. Um, I suspect that this has to do with the, yeah, this has to do with the ad system that Amazon has. Gotcha. Um, so I might go in here and play around with this a little bit more to get that cleaned up. If right. you run into those problems with your project, again, shoot me an email. I can give you some advice about ways to clean that up. But other than that, this looks pretty good. Right. There may be some styles, like for example, the text here is not styled correctly. But for the most part, everything looks pretty solid. Right, and it looks like all the links, the drop down menu is working. That's all there, my yeah. links are working. Um, so this has been a pretty successful um, um, successful uh, project, I think. The other thing that you can do if you're not, if you don't want to work with File Manager, and I should mention, probably the trickiest part of working with File Manager is figuring out, based on where you uploaded the file, what the URL of the file is going to be. Right. So, since I uploaded it to what I know is the root of marthabertus.net, mm -hmm. all I needed to do was put in um, marthabertus.net slash, and then the name of the file. Okay. Um, if the students in DS106 slash 7 um, put it in the root of their domain, mm -hmm. say their domain was timowens.net, they yeah. would go to timowens.net slash the name of the file. Mm -hmm. If they put it in a folder of that, um, a subfolder, it would be like timowens.net slash folder mm -hmm. name slash file name. So that's the trickiest part is figuring out um, very often what the URL is right. of the file that you've uploaded. But actually what I discovered, and I didn't even realize this would work, but my students um, in the spring were able to do this successfully. You can actually, if you're working in your blog, just add a new post. Okay. So let's go so, ahead and do this. So this is going to be similar to if we were uh, uploading an image. We'll do both right something. now. Okay, okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and add the image. And this is what you're going to need to do for your final project, students of DS106-7. You're going to need to actually go through this process of writing a post, putting the image in, and then linking um, to your, your page somewhere. So okay. this is a good example. Um, right, so the uh, ping file, that's our screenshot. Yeah, I guess I put, did I call it? I guess I called it DS106. Mm -hmm. Oh, my bad. It's understandable. It's complicated. Are, it's confusing. These are hard times. So there's DS106 underscore Amazon.png. Um, All right, and this is a large image. So what you're going to do is uh, you're going to put the thumbnail. I'm going to put a in thumbnail, there, and it's linking. But it's linking here. The link URL is to the larger version. Okay. So I'll insert that thumbnail. So that's just a tiny little version of it. Okay. And then below that, I'm going to also upload um, the HTML file. Okay.
and this should work. And so you and just click the same upload button. Yeah, that same you did. upload button. Okay. But instead of uploading an image, I'm uploading an HTML file, and when I'm done, I just click insert into post. Okay. And what that does is make a link. Oh, okay. To that page. So let's go ahead and publish this and see how it looks. So there's the image, and if I click on that, there's the large version. Oh, yeah. Which okay. we can zoom in on. Right. Um, and then there's the link to the HTML version. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So it's really pretty straightforward. And that way, we didn't have to worry about the, that long URL there that you've exactly, got, MarthaBurtis.net. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even uploads. have to pay attention to the URL. Right. WordPress kind of took care of that for me. Great. Um, Let's talk about one other thing um, before we finish up here today, um, and that's what sort of pages and what sort of sites um, are the best ones to use for this project. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you um, that there are certain kinds of pages and certain kinds of sites that don't lend themselves very okay. well to this project. Pages um, that use a lot of images um, to as the content mm -hmm. tend to not be very useful for this project because in order to really change the content, you actually have to make a new image. Okay. Um, and what's a little confusing about that is sometimes you don't necessarily know when you go to a page whether or not the content you're looking at is text that can be edited easily using Firebug or an image that would then have to be created using a photo editor mm -hmm. um, to replace that image. So you have to kind of look around, but if as you start to drill around in Firebug you discover that the content is not editable text but it's actually links to images, that's a sign that this isn't a great a great page unless you're really comfortable working in a photo editor and you want to go that extra mile mm -hmm. and create new images with the exact same dimensions and upload them and substitute out those links. And you would know that when you went to inspect the element if that yes. text wasn't there if it was an image? Yeah if it, if it wasn't an editable text element but instead it was that IMG okay. um, HTML element um, and it was just linking to an image that right. would be an indication that this might be a harder site to work with. Sure. The other sites that are very hard to work with probably impossible to work with are sites that have a lot of flash oh, okay. on them. So if they're using flash animations, you're going to have a lot of trouble making changes mm -hmm. um, to those pages. Um, it'll be virtually impossible actually. Mm -hmm. And then surprisingly, one of the things that's happened that's kind of frustrating too is that um, the pages more and more are using these special scripts, jQuery scripts, mm -hmm. to have things like rotating images right. um, or rotating slideshows or rotating stories on the page. Mm -hmm. Those are really hard to work with in Firebug and the reason is that those scripts are set to do kind of an auto refresh. Right. And so as you're working in Firebug, literally things will change on the page and, and so fun, and you'll lose your work or you'll gotcha. lose your place. Right. So my recommendation is actually to stick to pages that have as much editable text as possible. Even mm -hmm. sim the simpler the better in some ways. Amazon pages are pretty easy to work with. Craigslist pages are really easy to work with yeah. because they're very text heavy. Facebook isn't too bad. Okay. You you did a Facebook one, right? That mm -hmm. wasn't too bad. Twitter is doable, but it has some kind of nuances to it. I actually wrote a blog post about this. We'll include the that resource as well okay. when we put the assignment up. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's as important to pick the right source material um, as it is to do the, you know, doing the assignment is as much about picking the right starting place right. as it is about the edits themselves. And I would say a good resource for um, students right now would be to look at those past assignments. Previous assignments yeah, yeah, from the past summer course and then the spring before that. There's a wealth of assignments where people have already done things. And just because someone has done a website before, it doesn't mean that you can't put your own spin on it. You know, there's nothing saying that someone couldn't go out and do a, a web story on another Amazon page. Exactly. And it could still yeah. be completely interesting because you're yeah. putting your own spin on it, your own story to that. So. Really, the Amazon page is just the frame within which you enact your story. Right. Um, and you can do anything within that frame. Um, and again, I really do encourage people to kind of look at sort of the ancillary elements of the page that can be edited. Very often, like, the magic of the story is in just some little extra edit that maybe you made to mm -hmm. um, to a drop down menu or to a particular link, you know, kind of a side link. Mm -hmm. um, 
So that's a really interesting um, challenge yeah. to think about all the different ways in which your story can unfold in all the different kind of rhetorical spaces that you have in that page. Mm -hmm. um, anything else that we should mention about this assignment? I don't know. I think we've covered a whole lot. So know. let's take a quick look at the chat and see sure. if anybody has any questions. Yep, people are coming up with some ideas, a mm -hmm. Facebook history of the United States. Um, yeah, static pages are better than ones that have a lot of rotating content. Martha keeps I don't know what that's about. Um, I don't yeah, see anything. So I think everybody's like pretty good. If you have any questions, yeah, now's the time to ask. This assignment to recap will be due this Wednesday, July 13th, 2011 at midnight. Okay. You need to have that post up on your blog with a link to the image as well as a link to the code. Um, a post will go up later today with the archive of this video as well as some additional past resources for this assignment so that you'll have some help. Mm -hmm. I am available on Twitter, M. Burtis on Twitter. If you have questions, if something comes up and you're having a lot of trouble, I'll do my best to get in there and help you with that. Um, tomorrow, I don't know what's happening because like I said at the beginning of this broadcast, yeah. I'm fulfilling my commitment to this assignment you after were, that. You know, you committed to do the web story thing, yeah. and we thank you for that. And We just hope the DS-106 gods shine upon us. Oh, yeah. I'm actually seeing an update to the schedule. Tomorrow, it looks like, ah, oh, tomorrow we're going to have a radi the radio shows. Okay. Um, right. Those are going to be at 1.30 tomorrow the starting. So the time is changing due. tomorrow. Um, and are it they looks turning like them in tonight or they're due by midnight tonight midnight, is that correct midnight tonight they're due so tomorrow I'm gonna be working uh, with a student Alan Liddell is gonna come in and sort of help us with that and I'm hoping I can even get a special <laughs> guest and can um, you tell us who that is, is... Uh, uh, I don't know if I can tell yet I'm still working on it uh, but it was someone can you give us a hint I'll, I'll give you a hint okay that, uh, it's someone who is related to Jim Groom so, um, <clears throat> gym, like, like Bianca filled in for the doctor. Exactly. Somebody else from the we've Groom got, family. We have someone from the, the Groom, Groom dynasty. From, yeah, exactly. We'll so, be stepping in. Uh, and so I'm still working to make sure that I can get him to come on. Um, and so that's going to be a radio course. That's not going to be on DS106 TV. So tomorrow is a new time at 1.30. Interestingly, I don't DS think Alan Liddell radio. knew that he was going to be doing the show tomorrow. Um, his <laughs> response in the chat was somewhat surprised. Alan, that's the way things roll in DS-106-7. You get called upon at any moment's notice exactly. to just step in, step up. Look what we're doing. Exactly. And, yeah. So hopefully you'll bring your A-game. Yeah. Alan. So that'll be 1.30 tomorrow on the radio. So students need to be tuned into DS-106 radio to listen to yes. um, the that, radio There will be no live TV broadcast tomorrow. Right. We'll, we will probably take Skype calls and do things. So we'll, we'll cross-cast. Um, what uh, we'll probably we'll try and do, as we've done before, is we'll broadcast on the radio. Uh, but <laughs> like if you were to, for whatever reason, go to the TV station, uh, DS106.TV, you will be able to hear the audio okay. for the radio station. Thanks so, for pointing that out, yeah, and so thanks have, for understanding that. Sure. Because when people talk to you with their fingers in front of their mouths, mm -hmm. it's hard. It is. It's hard to understand. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. No, not a problem. Oh, oh Wednesday. Right. That's right. Um, Wednesday, we're going to have uh, an introduction to the video assignment. Oh, okay. With apparently another member of the Groom Dynasty. Oh, okay. Um, Jim Groom's twin brother. I, wow. Oh, oh, that would be, oh, we're not sure who that is. Mm. Who? Tim Groom. Tim Groom. Tim Groom. Tim Groom will join us on Wednesday. Tim Groom will be here on Wednesday. I didn't know Jim had a twin brother. Yes. Interestingly, apparently. I thought Jim Groom's name was Jimmy. Mm. Um, so maybe this is another Timmy. Oh, wow. It's going to be confusing this around here. This is very confusing, so just hold on. And yeah. I don't know what that intro to video is going to be like. Um, I'm sure Jim's brother mm. will come up with something interesting. Yeah. But right. from, from Tuesday on, we're going to be broadcasting at 1.30 now. We understand that that makes it a little bit easier for some folks who are taking a course during this time period to be yeah. able to participate. So hopefully that will work out for most people. Uh, so that will yeah. be an alternative. Yeah. Right, 1.30 yeah. p.m. from uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. onward. Okay, great. Well, thanks again, Tim. Not a problem. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all of you out there for your patience and your understanding. Mm -hmm.
as this class continues to unfold DS-106 slash 7 for life.